Welcome everyone as we gather together for worship. Uh, I encourage you, you look at this banner here, beautiful fall foliage, praise God from whom all blessings flow. I encourage you as the season wears on and it gets darker to please go outside as much as you can. Uh, a lot of people have been in lockdowns for a long time, not interacting with other people. It's so important, so very important that you get out and enjoy uh, the beauty of God's creation. Go out and take a walk. Kick the leaves around, crunch, crunch your feet on the leaves and uh, your shoes. And uh, it's, just, uh, it's just an enjoyable time of year to get outside. So I encourage you to do that. Thank you for joining us. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious Father, thank you so much for the gift of your grace and mercy in our life. Fill us with your spirit now and draw us unto yourself. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. the 
first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces, in pieces the doors of bronze and cut 
cut through the bars of iron, and I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other besides me. There is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in, and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Hello, and please stand for the reading of the gospel, the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at verse 15. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, starting at verse 15. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to, to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him, and they went away. This is the gospel of our Lord, and praise to you, O Christ. In, this, in our time of prayer together, we count it as a privilege and honor to go before God's throne of grace on behalf of your prayers. So I'd encourage you to send your prayer requests in to Good Shepherd uh, SC at Comcast.net or Pastor B. Spang at Comcast.net. Um, and we would count it as a privilege and honor to pray for you. We'll have to spend some time in prayer uh, for the upcoming election, very important time in the history of our nation. Um, and also the ongoing pandemic that's going on as well. A lot of moving parts, a lot of, of uh, issues to be dealt with. So let's go before God. God is sovereign. Nothing has happened that has caught him by surprise. Let's go before God's throne of grace. Father, we come into your presence and are thankful, Lord God, for this time together. Thankful, Lord God, that you sit on your throne. There is nothing that has occurred that has shaken you, has, has uh, thrown you off in any way. Lord God, you may have shaken the um, governments of the world. You may have shaken the financial institutions of the world. You may have shaken uh, the, the employment of people, but you are not shaken. You are, you are a rock, you are a fortress, and you alone will we trust. 
in the midst of everything that's going on. Lord God, give us the faith to trust in you throughout all of this and give us the hope, fill our hearts with the hope and the joy of knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we would be people that go forth and proclaim the good news of Jesus in the midst of, of people that are troubled right now, that are filled with anxiety, that are filled with uh, hurt and depression or maybe loss of job, maybe loss of health, whatever it is, Lord God, help us to engage this society with the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for letting us be a part of your great redemptive mission. We pray for this nation, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for your healing touch to be upon this nation, that we would repent and turn to you, that we acknowledge as, as the church that we have failed to do uh, the calling, the high calling that you have given to your, to your people, to your church, to the body of Christ, that we would be a, uh, about the mission that Jesus has given to us. And Lord God, that we would proclaim unabashedly that our only hope is found in Jesus Christ and in him alone and not in a political party, not in a political candidate, but our hope is found in Jesus and in Jesus alone. We pray for those uh, who are in office and those who are running for office, Lord God, may they repent and turn to you. May they humble themselves and turn to you. That they, uh, this constant bashing of each other and tearing each other down uh, is not going to bring healing to this nation. That we need to repent and turn to you and, be, and humble ourselves before you, the true and the living God. So Lord God, we pray that in all things we would render unto you what is yours. You own everything that we would truly submit our lives fully and completely to you and would acknowledge that. And that, our, that the decisions that we make, the choices that we make in life will reflect the fact that everything that we have, the very next breath we take is only by your grace. Help us, Father God, to recognize that and that our lives will reflect that. We pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus who's taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Do your Holy Spirit conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe. And our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in marvelous light. Forever seated high. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe.
shines the sun. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection. When he shall rise. today's message, we're going to be taking a look at our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 22, where certain religious leaders and Herodians, political leaders, confront Jesus and try to entrap him on the issue of taxation. Of course, that's always a good one to try to entrap somebody on the issue of taxation. Uh, it's one that riles up a lot of emotion in people. So let's uh, go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come in your presence and we pray that we would be open to learning from Jesus now. Open to learning from him and being taught by him. He is the one uh, who is the resurrection and the life. He is the one who is the creator of the universe. He is the one that can give us life and point us uh, in the direction to escape the tyranny of this age. We pray this in his mighty name. Amen. So one of the rallying cries of the colonists against the British Empire was taxation without representation is tyranny. Uh, and that was the cry that they had leading up to the Revolutionary War against the British. So what is meant by that is that paying taxes without having representation on the policies that a government is going to uh, in enact is tyranny. You're just being forced to pay taxes. You have no say in how those taxes are used. And so they're saying that is tyranny. So why were why colonists rebelling against the British uh, may have ha made that 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 saying famous. Taxation without representation has been around for a long, long time throughout history. Do you think that, and even now, it's, it's, it's very calm. Do you think the 1.2 billion Chinese have much to say, anything to say about how their government is run and what policies their government enacts? Um, that is a good ch sized chunk of people living right now. That's just one example of taxation without representation. So imagine how the Jews felt at Jesus' time. Uh, they were a conquered people, a people under the rule of Rome, a people that were forced to pay taxes to keep the Roman military machine, the Roman government going, the hated Roman government that was occupying them. Uh, if there's any sure wire, fire way to uh, keep... Uh, somebody's popularity down, it is to connect them with the hated taxation policies of the Roman Empire that was actually occupying them at that time. So you see what, what's at, at stake here. You see how, uh, how you know, tentative waters that, that Jesus would have to walk in if he's confronted with this issue of taxation. So the Pharisees, and the Herodians, so it's interesting, the religious leaders and Herodians, which are more of a political force of people that are uh, kind of follow Judaism to an extent, but more politically tied, both those groups come to confront Jesus. And uh, they, they think they have a surefire way to crush Jesus's popularity. But they begin by heaping praise on him. Teacher, we know that you are true and you teach the way of God truthfully and you do not care about anyone else's opinion. Have you ever said someone come up to you and act really nice to you? 
only to ask for something then? Sometimes our kids do that. They come up to us and they really, you know, really all nice to us because they want to ask uh, to do something that normally we might say no to, that they're hopefully they'll soften us up a little bit so they would say yes, yeah, that we would say yes to what they're asking. So uh, after the butter up by the, the Pharisees and the Herodians, uh, they hit Jesus with the gotcha question. Uh, what say you, great magnificent teacher? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Well, they think they have him. That's almost like uh, asking somebody, what's your opinion? Is it better to cough in someone's face during COVID or is it better to sneeze in someone's face during this time of COVID? Or are you for defunding the police or are you for the police beating minorities? It's kind of like, well, we're trying to entrap you with two, op two options that aren't good. Jesus would have none of their false entrapment options. He says, give me a coin. And okay, whose inscription's on this coin? Oh, Caesar's. Render under Caesar, what is Caesar's? And unto God, what is God's? So, certainly Jesus was treading where people don't want to tread. He was living under taxation without representation, which the founders of our nation called tyranny. However, Jesus recognized that there's a different type of tyranny that we can fall into. There's a different tyranny that was pressing into people's lives. It was the tyranny of rebelling against God and against his authority and not rendering to God what is God's. He recognized that when we don't render to God, when we don't do that, and we don't recognize him as authoritative in our life, then inevitably we look to scapegoats on what is going wrong in our life. Caesar is a convenient scapegoat. If we just tend to have this dictator standing over us, then everything would be okay. You see this a lot in politics. If we, you know, this is the most important election coming up in the history of our life. And if we just didn't have this leader and, and then we replaced him with that leader, then everything would be great. It would all be fine. That's what's wrong with our lives. It's everything else that's going on. Going on. So whether it be a Caesar or the police or protesters, white people, black people, Democrats, Republicans, you name it. And when we go down that path of scapegoating others and not recognize that the central issue to the problems that we face is that our, it is our rebellion against God, then we succumb to a different type of tyranny. That's what Jesus is getting at. He says, render to, to Caesar what is Caesar, and to God what is God's. Are you recognizing that even if Caesar is gone, if you're not rendering to God what is God's, you're submitting yourself to tyranny. James Madison, one of the founders of our nation, he studied what went wrong with other uh, with, uh, with other democracies, ancient democracies. What went wrong in ancient Athens uh, where they had like a more of a pure democracy in which people would, thousands of people would come in and uh, they would supposedly vote on a certain issue. And the problem was though that people would sway the crowd one way or the other and, the, and it would just kind of melt it down. It turned into more of a mob over time. And so, it, you know, the crowd could be swayed by somebody who had great rhetorical skills, great, great, great speaking skills, and would sway the crowd. He concluded that a pure, repres a, a pure democracy wouldn't work and that what would be better was a representative form of government uh, where reason would have a better chance of prevailing and holding out the positions of the mob 
that uh, it wouldn't be swayed as much if it was representative. However, that was all before the internet came along. With the advent of the internet and the algorithms that are used in the internet, the positions that people hold are reinforced. They get the same types of things popping up over and over again that reinforces their position. And over time, when they hear a different position, because they've been reinforced in that position over and over again, they, they completely write off the other as wrong, but not only wrong, but as evil. Once you're convinced that the other side is evil and been reinforced in that, that the other side is evil, then it is very easy to wish harm upon them and just justify it as the right thing to do because after all, we have to remove the evil. As an ex, uh, an ex Facebook executive was recently quoted as wondering if our, doc, if our democracy, if our representative form of government, it's not a pure democracy, it's a representative form of government, will be able to survive in this age of social media. Make no mistake about it, there are forces that are at work that undermine our ability to have civil conversations anymore. Jesus knew that the, that the tyranny, tyranny of a dictator like a Caesar could just as easily be replaced by the tyranny of the righteous or self-righteous mob. After all, even though Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate, who was it that brought Jesus before Pilate? It was the righteous, the self-righteous mob. The self-righteous religious leaders brought Jesus before Pilate and pushed for his death when Pilate initially wanted to release him. They found nothing wrong in him. So Jesus reminds us that tyranny happens in a society whether it is ruled by a dictator or ruled by people that have turned into a self-righteous mob. He reminds us that the tyranny will reign unless we render unto God what is God's. What is God's? If your political allegiance is more important than submitting your life to God in all things, then you are promoting tyranny. If you have lost sight that Jesus gave his life for all people, not just for your tribe, then you're promoting tyranny. If you refuse to have a civil conversation with someone who holds a different view on political issues than you do, then you're promoting tyranny. If you find yourself flaming someone on the internet, on social media because they aren't woke enough, or on the other hand, they aren't conservative enough, then you're promoting tyranny. Anything other than rendering first and foremost to God promotes tyranny, no matter how good and right your position may be. No matter how good and right your position may be. You must render first and foremost to God. Jesus says, render to God what is God's. If, is there anything that isn't his? Is there anything? Have you given yourself fully and completely to God? Have you given yourself fully and completely to Jesus? Do you spend time reading his word, his word and applying it to your life? Or do you take your cues from CNN or Fox News? Do you take your cues in life from the Washington Post or the Washington Times or from Jesus? Do you get what to think about, you know, process how to think about certain issues from Stephen Colbert or Trevor Noah? Trevor Noah? 
or from God's word. Mark the words of Jesus well. Mark the words of Jesus well. Unless we render to God what is God's, we are setting ourselves up for a whirlwind of tyranny in our nation. Mark the words of Jesus well. It was both the mob and the government that crucified him. If you're looking for the government to save you or the mob to save you, you will find yourself looking at the trash heap of the gods that you trusted in that failed to deliver. Render to Jesus what is Jesus. All praise, all glory, all dominion, all power, all might, all authority has been given unto him. All trust and hope should be placed in him and in him alone. All forgiveness now and for eternity is in his hand, not in anything else. Render to him what is his. Submit everything in your life to him. Render to it to him and be rescued from the tyranny of our age. Let's pray. Father God, help us to recognize the tyranny of this age and to not fall trap into trusting in a political solution to what is primarily a sin problem in our nation, that we would not trust in, uh, put our faith and hope and trust in the self-righteous mob, but we would look to you. We would humble ourselves before you. We would render to you everything that is due to you. We would, we would cry out to you and, and receive grace and forgiveness that only you can give and that you would change our hearts our, and, and minds and, it, and, and conform them to the image of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Be with us. We cry out to you and we need you desperately. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us confess together our faith in the triune God and all he has done for us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have a, a time of confession before the Lord and the Lord knows what's really on our heart but what he's inviting us to do is come before him be honest before him come into his presence uh, don't hide anything from him run to him it's a mistake for us to run from God we should run towards him and confess to him so let us let's open our hearts and our minds to him there'll be a time of silence silence as well that we can really pour out our hearts to God so from the words uh, from, the, from 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment in silence to reflect upon our need for Christ.
the Lord, let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the gift of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today, and we pray that God's blessing will be upon you as you go about your week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Go forth with God's blessings. Amen. You are good, you are good, when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sins. You are peace, you are peace, when that fear is crippling.
other name Jesus Jesus my heart